What's up, YouTube? What's up, world? It's your boy, Marky Mark, back with another <laughs> video. And as promised, I'm going to be delivering to you today. We have a Virgin Island, a very, very special hey, Virgin <laughs> Island with me <laughs> that we're going to be featuring today on the vlog. And it's none other but Tuhira Duran. Yes. All right? Yeah. And she comes all the way from our sister island across the water. The big I island. You can see it today because it's a little bit cloudy, you check. <laughs> but um, she comes to us all the way from the big island of St. Croix. And I'm happy to have her here. <laughs> We've Thank been you talking about this. Me. We've been trying to set this up for about two months now. So glad that you can make it yeah. and so forth. So without any further ado, I'll have you Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so mm -hmm. first of all, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. um, so my Pleasure. name is Tahira Durand. I am a local author, entrepreneur. I work in economic development and I would like to consider myself an overall creative. Um, I really I really have a passion for the Virgin Islands, for VI culture, Caribbean culture. So I'm just excited to be here and have this conversation and you know, all things in God's time. So I'm happy that it's happening now. So you originally, you born and raised on St. Croix? I, I always say like born, raised and mm -hmm. educated. So I was born and raised on St. Croix. Mm -hmm. um, I got a degree from UVI. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and then after that, I was actually gonna start going into a PhD program and that's another mm -hmm. conversation. Mm -hmm. okay. But yeah, born, raised and educated <laughs> so on St. Croix. Why do you mention that? I know a lot of people, they go to school mm -hmm. and get a degree and then they operate in a field that they didn't even have a degree in. Is that the case for you? It definitely <laughs> is, but I would say my degree came in handy. So I have okay. a background in biology. I actually mm -hmm. got a bachelor's of science in biology with okay. a minor in health sciences. Mm -hmm. um, I was on a trajectory to actually study biomedical sciences. Mm -hmm. So after I graduated UVI, I mm -hmm. went to UNC Chapel Hill and did mm -hmm. one year in their uh, okay. doctoral program. Okay. Wow. And I really like I love science like mm -hmm. I really do I mm -hmm. love science I love doing research but I felt like something else in life was calling me mm -hmm. like I didn't oh, okay. feel fulfilled I mm -hmm. felt like it was just this like you know how they call it like that nine to five grind it yeah, felt like yeah, a nine yeah. to five grind and I didn't mm -hmm. feel I just didn't feel fulfilled so mm -hmm. I ended up moving back home I actually was okay. um, working on a company with two friends VI crawl mm -hmm. okay. um, and you know we're working on a couple things focusing on building out like a cultural centered app mm -hmm. um, and everything didn't work out there but I think once I was able to transition from the company and focus more on self I was able to publish a book that I actually you know the contents I wrote back in 2020 but I was just like mm -hmm. sitting on it and doing oh, okay, nothing okay. with it um, and I just had this, I want to, I always tell people it was almost like an internal calling. Mm -hmm. Like when I started oh, wow. writing the story, everything just unraveled. And even when I look back at the characters and mm -hmm. how the characters relate to Madras within mm -hmm. the Caribbean mm -hmm. and all these different aspects of culture and heritage. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, so I also work in economic development. Oh, so okay. this is, this is where my background, <laughs> my yeah, biology yeah, yeah. background comes okay. in. So. Uh, I, I'm the Sustainable Development Associate at the UVI RT Park. Okay. So I work with um, the business attraction team to attract mm -hmm. companies in you know, renewable energy, mm -hmm. whether it's wind or solar infrastructure, the blue economy, mm -hmm. um, and sustainable agriculture. So having the background in STEM helps me connect with a lot of our clients who are mm -hmm. doing research and development, um, and also looking into ways that we could partner with UVI, mm -hmm. and hopefully, you know, when I was at UVI, I had to do a lot of my research experience away within the mainland, but mm -hmm. we're hoping to actually provide those experiences for students within the territory so that they don't have to leave. Oh, okay, awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. So what's the earliest that you got into writing, I guess? Oh, say? I remember. <laughs> I was really young. I don't know how old, maybe like seven or eight. Mm -hmm. So back in, um, I, I went to the Evelyn M. Williams Elementary School. Okay. And in first grade, we had this assignment to write a poem, right? Mm. And I was like, dang, I didn't do my homework. So I was sitting down <laughs> in my grandmother's house. Yeah. And I was like looking at a wall and I was like, oh, that's a dope poem. I can mm -hmm. just like, it was this, um, mm -hmm. let's see if I can remember. To one who bears the sweetest name and adds luster to the same, long life to her for there's no other who takes the place of my dear mother. Awesome. So when I saw it, I was like, let me remix this, do it about my dad. I wrote a little poem and they were so impressed that I ain't gonna lie, I didn't tell them I kind of plagiarized. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've all been there. I didn't, I didn't tell them I plagiarized, uh -huh, but I think uh -huh. that was the start of like, you know, my creative expression mm -hmm. journey. 
Um, and not just with writing, but just being a performing artist. I did a mm -hmm. lot of dance. Um, I was also in choir, a lot of acting. So mm -hmm. it really put me on a trajectory of, you know, just being a, a creative artist in general. Okay, cool, cool. And being a writer, I don't know. I'm sure there are people out there who been trying to gain. They they have talent too. They probably have written something. Mm -hmm. Like, is it really hard to to get into the the business of writing books and getting them published and so forth? I would say I wouldn't say hard is the word. And I actually mm -hmm. had this conversation with. Um, a co-worker of mine at the RT Park and I was telling them you know it's really easy and she was like you know it's not easy because if it was easy everyone would do it mm -hmm. um, and the reason I said it was easy was because you know as creatives and writers we get these stories all the time mm -hmm. whether it's through poetry yeah. or any other medium but you know I think one thing that I did was I made sure I reached out to someone that could guide me. So oh, I actually okay. reached out to Johann C. Henley, mm -hmm. um, and he's, he was my mentor throughout the journey. Okay. He connected me with the site that he used to self-publish. Mm -hmm. So there's this a website called lulu.com, okay. mm -hmm. okay. um, and you can go in. They have guides that teaches you how to lay out the interior of your mm -hmm. book, okay. how to build out your cover page, whatever it is mm -hmm. that you need. Like At this point in time, like we could find anything that we need online. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That's mm -hmm. awesome. So besides... The gentleman, you, what, what's his name again? Johan C. Henley. Johan C. Yeah. Okay, Henley. So besides him, is there anyone else who writes you actually love? I mean, not necessarily hmm. local, but worldwide. Honestly, I have an obsession with Jordan Peterson. Okay. Yeah. yeah so I, I'm very big on we call it like the self help movement. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny because I always say like I don't read a lot of books. Mm -hmm, I, I mm -hmm. listen to audio books. I try to read here and there, but mm -hmm. I'm really big on just self help. Jordan Peterson, like the messages mm -hmm. that he um, delivers, also Alan Watts, mm -hmm. um, anything within the area of um, self improvement and just elevating my mindset. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, cool. Okay, so. As a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? Ha, it's actually funny. Um, I wanted to be a chef, actually. Wow. I love to cook. <laughs> I really love... Uh -huh. Well, first, I started as a veterinarian because I love animals. Okay. Mm -hmm. But when I was in high school, I just, I really loved to cook. And mm -hmm. I was like, you know, mommy, daddy, like, I think I want to be a chef. Like, I want to go to culinary school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My parents are down island parents mm -hmm. so they were like no like you're too smart for that you're too yeah, educated yeah, yeah. for that so I yeah i didn't really get mm -hmm. to pursue that passion but i mean i still love to cook i okay. consider myself a little you know you know i guess skills in the kitchen but mm -hmm. if i had to go back i wouldn't change it but you know the culinary arts is something that i feel i would have definitely excelled in mm -hmm. yeah. okay okay that's cool mm -hmm. and when did you write your first book? Oh, how old were you Ooh. when you wrote your first book? So I wrote the story for the book. So my book is called um, How a Nancy Spun Madras. Okay. I wrote the story back in 2020 during the pandemic. Mm, okay. Yeah, so I was just mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. I was bored. Um, like I mentioned, VI Crawl, they were having this like yeah. storytelling workshop. Mm -hmm. okay. And before the workshop, I was like, you know, I feel like I could write my own Anansi yeah, story, yeah, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So I just started writing and like, as I started, like from the first sentence, the second sentence, like everything just kept coming to me, like out of mm -hmm. nowhere. Okay. And I wrote out this really nice story. And at first it wasn't for kids. Mm -hmm. The story mm -hmm. wasn't for kids. Okay. It was for like older people, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, we could find some little funny things in yeah. there. Um, but then when I connected to Johan, see, I want to say in 2021, mm -hmm. either 2021 or 2022, mm -hmm. I was just like, you know, I really want to do something with the story. I'm sitting on it. I see that you write Anansi stories and you've published children's books. So I want an opportunity to, you know, get my story out there and let people okay. hear it. So it went from this like more adult centered, mm -hmm. not too adult centered, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know, well, something that we yeah, would yeah, relate yeah. to mm -hmm. more. Um, and I realized that kids like targeting kids that's a huge market of you know course, it's a huge course, market definitely, definitely. so i kind of had to go in and i changed up the story i changed up the rhyme scheme i added mm -hmm. little things that kids would connect to more and mm -hmm. then i officially published in september of 2022 okay yeah All right, well congratulations <laughs> thank you and that's the only literally work um literary work that you have published yes so far okay mm -hmm. okay the All first right. of many i like to say mm -hmm. yeah Okay, you kind of touched on it a little bit. Mm -hmm. What more or less was your inspiration? Mm. I, I would definitely say my time at UVI. So before mm -hmm. the pandemic, we were actually in the middle of this like cultural education workshop being put mm -hmm. on by VI Crawl. Okay. 
and you know I always had a love and passion for Caribbean culture but I never had I felt like I never had a true creative outlet okay. um, but going through the program being engaged in cultural storytelling and getting to perform again kind of just like sparked something yeah, yeah, in me yeah, and yeah, I was yeah, like yeah. you know like I feel like I could write something I could yeah. do this and then mm -hmm. the rest is history okay, cool, mm -hmm. cool. all right okay so for you what do you think makes a good story mm. For me, I would say the plot. Like the plot of the story is everything. Um, conflict between the characters, yeah. uh -huh. ensuring that you know the characters are actually learning something. Because you know, whenever we pick up a book, we always put ourselves in the shoes of the main mm -hmm. character. Exactly, you know, exactly. and we always love like a hero story where yeah. this person Everyone starts. Story. Yeah, every you know, you start at the bottom, and over time, as the story grows and develops you build yourself up into this like mm -hmm. phenomenal this person who's worthy of being the main exactly, character exactly. um in my book it's funny because usually anansi always wins he always gets mm -hmm. away with something mm -hmm. but this time i actually chose to spin it a little differently oh, okay. and i like, made um just to get a little sneak peek i made a certain character who we you know in the caribbean we might look down on them yeah, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. but that character is actually the one who becomes the hero and anansi oh, gets nice. caught up in a nice. web of you know mm -hmm. his own mm -hmm. like i say his mischievousness mm -hmm. exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> okay that's cool well i know it's probably time taken and so forth and you might need when you write in the books a little dung time and so forth mm -hmm. what do you do when you're not writing when I am not writing, I don't walk. <laughs> I was there, like, I always oh walk in. Like, I am always walking. Um, but no, I like to go to the beach, honestly. Okay. Yeah, my downtime, I love being outdoors. Mm -hmm. I love hiking. Okay, cool. um, I'm trying to get into meditation and mindfulness a lot more because. Have you noticed I'll be doing hikes? I have noticed <laughs> okay. that you'll be doing hikes. <laughs> but, like, I love, uh -huh. I love to be outside. Okay, so that's, cool. that's definitely a place to just release one thing about me like i hate having my phone so like oh, my phone yeah, is yeah. always mm -hmm. on do not disturb okay. um so i just like to disconnect and unwind from everything okay. yeah okay so since you are doing more or less children's books mm -hmm. i of course your books obviously would want to have illustrations yeah. so was it hard finding an illustrator mm -hmm. and like how that process was tell us a little bit about that process i have to go back to my mentor like mm -hmm. my mentor made the process very easy for okay. me so you know i think he learned a lot of the hard lessons first mm -hmm. and then it just yeah. made it a lot easier for me yeah, so what he did is he connected me in this it actually was a facebook group for writers oh, and illustrators wow. okay. mm -hmm. and i just went in and i made a post and i was like hey everyone you know i'm looking for an illustrator mm -hmm. i'm writing a cultural children's book mm -hmm. around anansi the spider um, i made sure to let them know like it's going to be very afrocentric mm -hmm. it's focused on culture and you know the black diaspora and then, you know, I got like a ton of responses. Mm -hmm. So, you wow, know, like my wow, inbox wow. was just like flooded. Yeah. Um, and I had to go in and look at everyone's portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, and when I, when I came across the portfolio for the guy that I chose to be my illustrator, mm -hmm. he actually, you know, he's an illustrator from uh, Brazil named Eduardo Pupa. Oh, wow. okay. And his mm -hmm. illustrations are, like they're phenomenal yeah, i was yeah. like you know well, I'm, I'm like i'm willing <laughs> yeah. to invest the money to mm -hmm. get illustrations from him and he also yeah. expressed that you know growing up in brazil he mm -hmm. learned about anansi the spider oh, okay. and wow, he grew up with nice. anansi yeah, stories yeah, yeah. so yeah and i think a cool side note is that i actually use my stimulus check to oh, pay yeah. for my illustrations so, you know <laughs> there you go, there you go. A money a that's free money <laughs> Long way, a long way. All yeah. right, so you put the money to good use, mm -hmm. definitely, definitely. Um, in the whole process, what is, I'll say, the most important thing you have learned, or, or even probably an mm. interesting thing you've learned in the process of writing books and so forth? I, hmm, I would definitely have to say that you have to be willing to take constructive criticism oh, okay. you know because awesome. although yeah. like i love the book i mm -hmm. love the story mm -hmm. like you know i'm very proud of the work uh -huh. but as i've had other people read it especially those mm -hmm. who are you know impactful in my life my ap english teacher um miss brown who's also um, a writer back in st croix mm -hmm. i realize that there are portions of the book where I could spend more time and improve mm -hmm. the storyline mm -hmm. to hold the audience's attention mm -hmm. to you know make them make the story or make mm -hmm. the audience connect with the yeah, story yeah, more yeah. and sometimes you know some people can be harsh with criticism mm -hmm. but it's always 
I've learned to, you know, never take that personal. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Everyone's response is based on their life and their life experiences. Mm -hmm. So I just have to pick out the parts that are important to me and that mm -hmm. um, can benefit me and then see how I could improve from there. Oh, okay. Yeah. You, you took me back just now too. <laughs> so I'm a technical guy. Mm -hmm. I'm into IT. I went to DeVry for IT and computer networking and mm -hmm. stuff like that. English class, I didn't feel like I needed it, man. Hey. I didn't feel like I needed it. <laughs> and I write the best paper, you know. Come back, get a paper with a whole bunch of a red writing over it. I'm like, man, it's a perfect thing. But the, the criticism from the professor did help, you yeah. know what I mean? To get me to, by the end of the semester, I was writing like this touch, top notch papers yeah. and stuff like that. So criticism does help. A lot of people don't know how to take constructive criticism, but it is good if we learn to take yeah. constructive cr criticism and then implement it into our daily work, mm -hmm. like daily life and so forth. Yeah. So talking about that, you have any works for another book right now or are you just busy well, going ahead showcasing the book and so forth? Yeah, so right now I told myself that I was, I used to do too much. Like I was caught up in the hustle mentality mm -hmm. a little too much. Okay. Um, so right now I'm really just trying to push this book. I want to get it. Um, not just on St. Croix, but here in St. Thomas and okay. St. John and throughout the rest of the Caribbean on the mainland U.S. So I'm really just pushing to gain some more exposure from the book, but I'm also working on a little something, something on okay. the side okay. that okay. you know soon okay. come. Good, good, yeah. Good. All right, so you will be on the lookout for that, all right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so in writing the book and so forth and putting it out there, <laughs> as you were saying, and getting constructive criticism and so forth, how, how has been the reception from your family members and friends mm -hmm. and the general public at large? Honestly, like it's, I haven't received much bad, mm -hmm. say bad press, you <laughs> okay, know, <okay>. but <laughs> people really love the story. Mm -hmm. They love the book. Yeah, the yeah. illustrations are captivating. Mm -hmm. um, I know that my family is really, really, really proud. Yeah, okay, um, cool. I am the last girl of seven kids. There's mm -hmm, only one mm -hmm. boy after me. Mm -hmm. So I think you know, just showing my siblings, my parents, mm -hmm. everyone in my family that whatever it is we're passionate about, we could find a way to turn that craft mm -hmm. into, you know, a business, something that could mm -hmm. actually help us create income. Um, within the wider public, you know, I think a lot of people are just happy that I'm helping um, mm -hmm. our younger generation connect mm -hmm. to our culture, oh, yeah. connect Definitely. back to Caribbean Definitely. culture. Yep. Yeah. Okay, well, and in mentioning younger siblings, mm -hmm. are any of them wanting to follow in your footsteps? And what would you have to say <laughs> to them and anyone else who would be an aspiring writer such as yourself? Well, I don't think, the one younger brother I have, I don't think he would want to be a writer, but okay. I definitely see with um, my older brother, he's connecting a lot to the content that I'm post posting on social media. Okay. So mm -hmm. he, um, he's been involved in business for a very long time. So mm -hmm. now he's learning to actually share the knowledge and skills that he has. He's creating oh, okay. reels mm -hmm. and, wow. you know, yeah, just yeah, getting yeah, that yeah. information out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. That's really cool. And uh, so what would you say to someone who's aspiring to become a writer? Mm -hmm. I would say, like, and I look at the camera like, don't be afraid, you know, mm -hmm. like, do not be afraid mm -hmm. to just try. Whether okay. you succeed, I don't really like to consider things failures. You mm -hmm. succeed or Correct. you learn something, mm -hmm. you exactly, know. Exactly. Um, just put yourself out there. There's a lot of different platforms online that you could mm -hmm. start with. I was trying to introduce one of my friends to Gumroad. Okay. Um, yeah. I published through Lulu.com, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but there's a lot of different platforms yeah. that you could go mm -hmm. on. You could post your work, get feedback, and then when you're mm -hmm. ready, you know, find someone to mentor you. Like, yeah, find yeah. someone to be in your corner and have your back. Mm -hmm. So that way, you know, if you feel that you're stuck or you're not sure which direction you go in, you know mm -hmm. that you always have someone who has already done it, mm -hmm. you know, to guide you and push you forward. Okay, that's yeah. great. So we see that we have a lot of online help. A lot. <laughs> just go there, Google it, Google mm -hmm. it, and find out at least... I, be, I basically could say like what would be your niche whoever could help you best and so yeah. forth those materials source materials that could help you definitely go online and check it out all right so last but not least or just to close out yeah. um how could people find you find out about your books more information how can they buy your books mm -hmm. and so forth i know we have a lot of virgin islanders living in the states and in so mainland. forth you can watch my youtube channel how can people um 
get a hold of your books and so forth. Yeah, so what you could you? find me on Instagram at locally T, so L O K A L I dot T, or on Facebook at Torhira Durand, T O R H E R A D U R A N D. Right now, my books are available on lulu.com, that's L U L U dot com, um, and I also have books on hand for anyone who lives within the U.S. Virgin Islands. Okay. So feel free to reach out to me and contact me at any point. Okay. Well, in closing, she actually is visiting us over here on the in between Media Island. <laughs> <laughs> um, just cl in closing, tell us what you're doing here this weekend or for the next week and so forth. Yes, and actually. If somebody could actually come out and meet you in the meantime. Between they time. can. So yeah. I will actually be visiting um, an art gallery in St. John later okay. today and mm -hmm. doing a book reading and signing over there. And okay. I'm also going to be visiting a school on Thursday here oh, on wow. St. Thomas. Okay. So awesome. I also then try to find some time to just relax mm -hmm. while I'm here. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I'm excited to just connect with some local and mm -hmm. you know see where I could get the book mm -hmm. yeah. okay definitely well there you have it guys <laughs> it's been a wonderful interview I thank, thank you thank you thank you from the bottom of my heart from coming on the program and at least letting people know about yourself what you do mm -hmm. and so forth uh, we are always looking forward to you have a lot of talent in the Virgin we Island do. guys a lot a lot of talent and a young talent too <laughs> so I think we have talent I say the younger Virgin Islanders could look up to and so forth. Uh, I just want to say, as I say, big ups, big ups to, to Hero up and coming, you know what I mean, Virgin <laughs> Islander. I know this ain't, this ain't going to be the last book that she has coming mm -hmm. out. There's more in store. And you guys definitely go check her out on social media and so forth, all the platforms and so forth. Make sure you get one of those books. For, everybody has somebody in their family. If you don't, you have got children, mm -hmm. somebody that you could even give A neighbor. <laughs> that you could give the books to and so forth. So thank you once again. Thank you for, for having me. And this has been another edition of M. Blyden Vlogs. And as I like to say, be sure to leave your mark on the world. All right? VI to Peace. the world, guys. <laughs> See you guys later.